Section 2.2, determining volumes by slicing. So again, this is from OpenStax Calculus Volume 2. If you want to go there, there's a link at the bottom of every page telling you where to go to get that, or the description if you're looking at this on YouTube. So we've been talking about area for quite some time. Now we're going to move to from two-dimensional objects to three-dimensional objects and their volume versus their area. Okay, so of interest to us at the moment is the cross-section of a solid. Okay, so if you have a three-dimensional solid, the cro a cross-section is the intersection of the plane with a solid, of a plane with that solid. All right, so if we start with a cylinder, an easy case to look at. All right, so we have the, a cylinder here. Now, if I take a plane and I slice into that, so a plane... I take a plane and I slice into that. What I get when I slice this is a circle. So this becomes just a circle, or perhaps an oval, but we get a circle there. If instead we had a square pyramid, if instead we had a square pyramid, which we're not going to deal with as much, but if you took a plane and sliced this, you would get a square. Okay, so it really depends on what the base is in this case. All right, now, if we were going to find the area of something like this, all of the cross-sectional areas, that would give us volume. Okay, so the area, at this, the area of that circle, of that circle, of that one right there, of that one right there, the area of all of those circles would give us, or the sum of those, would give us the volume. And so that leads us to this formula right here. Okay, so where A of X here is the cross-sectional area, area of the cross-section. So the volume of this function here is approximately the sum from I equals 1 to N of the area times the change in X. Okay, the change in X in that case. Now, if we take the limit on this, we end up getting something called the slicing method. So V of S, okay, V of S is the integral from A to B of the area times D of X. Okay, so here is the method we are going to follow with this. Okay, finding volumes with the slicing or the um, disk method is eventually what it will be called. Examine the solid, determine the shape of the cross section. Okay, determine the area of the cross section. Drawing a picture helps. Okay, determine the formula for that area. Okay, so that cross-section you just came up with, find the area of that. Integrate that area formula over the interval that you're looking at to get the volume. Okay, now it's important to note this thing right here, that in this section we assume slices are perpendicular. Okay, so in this case, well they're perpendicular to the x-axis. Okay, so therefore the area is going to be in terms of x, and the limits of integration are going to be the x-axis. Um, but this actually is true no matter how we slice it. So if we do it in terms of y like we will in a little bit, the same strategy holds. So use the slicing method to find the volume of the solid of revolution bounded by the graphs f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 5, x equals 1 and x equals 4, and rotated about the x-axis. So what this actually is, I'm going to go ahead and sketch this. So x squared minus 4x plus 5, well, I'm bounding it between 1 and 4. So at 1, the value of this function is 2. All right, and the vertex is to the right of that, so it's actually going to be at 4. It is, let's see, that'd be 16 minus 16, so 5. So we have a function that looks something like this. Now, we are taking that area and we are revolving it or rotating it around the x-axis. So here's our x-axis. We're going around that. So what that would be if we rotated this around is we would get something that looks like this. We get a volume that looks like this. All right, now we want to look at this from here. What does the base 
or the, a cross section look like? Well, a cross section is going to look just like this end right here. It's a circle. Okay, well, how do you find the area of a circle? It's pi r squared. Okay, well, in this case, the radius is found by the function itself. That would be from here to here. So the function is x squared minus 4x plus 5 squared. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and work this out just a bit. So if I square that, x squared minus 4x plus 5, x squared minus 4x plus 5, is going to be x to the fourth, and I'm going to skip the algebra steps in here, okay, for the multiplying, um, but I am double distributing, so I'm going to have three things there, three things there, and three there. Multiply a lot of things. So I'm going to get x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 26x squared minus 40x plus 25. Now, I'll write all that again. x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 26x squared minus 40x plus 25. That's my area. So I'm going to integrate this over the interval 1 to 4, since that's where my solid actually is. Integrating this, a of x dx. I'm going to go ahead and integrate this. That's going to be pi x to the fifth or 5 minus x to the fourth. I don't have it over there, but it's 2x to the fourth plus 26 cubed over 3 minus 20x squared. We'll divide by 2 there plus 25x. Nope, oh, we just integrated. Took the any derivative, so I don't need that dx anymore. This is from 1 to 4. Now, plugging the values of 4 and 1 in, not forgetting my pi, I get 78 over 5 pi units cubed. Cubed because we're looking at volume at this point. And again, verify, just like in the last one, verify that these numbers actually come out the way that they should. I could make a mistake. I've done the problem twice now, but actually three times. But anyways, I could have made a mistake. So it's always worthwhile to check this and make sure every step makes sense to you. All right, number 11. Use the slicing method to find the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving f of x equals 1 over x, about the x-axis over the interval 1 to 2. So the function 1 over x looks like this. We are going from 1 to 2. Yeah, from 1 to 2. So we're actually looking at this. When we revolve that around the x-axis, we get... something that's going to look a lot like that. All right, using the same idea as above, because we did pi r squared, you notice these are circles again. We have disks, okay, that's what we're going to end up calling these. We have disks, so the, the area is pi function squared. So our area, going from 1 to 2, we were given those limits of pi and that is 1 over x squared dx. All right, I'll go ahead and write that as x to the negative 2. All right, so then that would work out as negative pi x to the negative 1 from 1 to 2, which plugging in a 2 there, we get negative pi over 2. Plugging in 1, we get plus pi is what we'll end up getting there, since we're subtracting, so that would be pi over 2. And 
Ravens cubed. Okay, so if you notice, all of these solids of revolution had circles as their cross sections. This isn't a coincidence, and so we get to use something called, we generalize this as the disk method. Every time we do that, we come up with a disk. So if f of x is continuous and non-negative, define r as the region ab above, bounded above by the graph f of x, below by the x-axis on the interval a to b. Then the volume of the solid revolution formed by revolving r about the x-axis is given by v equals the integral from a to b, that's our interval, um, pi times f of x squared dx. All right, so now let's use this. We start off always making Riemann sums and kind of building it from there, and then it kind of just falls into using our integrals. That's actually why this chapter is called Applications of Integrals. All right, so use the disk method. I'm going to look at this. This is going to be the square root of x. That graph from 1 to 4 around the x-axis. Now notice that, okay? That might change sometimes. Hint, hint. About the x-axis. So that is going to be this solid. Okay, and it looks like that. Should be a little bit smoother though. So this volume is the integral from 1 to 4 pi square root of x squared dx based on that theorem, okay, this rule that we have. And that's the integral from 1 to 4 of pi x dx, which would be pi x squared over 2 from 1 to 4. Plugging those values in, we get 15 pi over 4 units cubed. Next, use the same concept, use the disk method, which says that our area, or actually our volume, I need to say that differently. Our volume is the integral from a to b of pi f of x squared dx. Now this is about the, it's between the function and the x-axis over the interval 0 to 4, and it's around the x-axis. So this does work. So this would be the integral from 0 to 4 pi square root of 4 minus x squared dx, which would be 4 pi minus pi x. Okay, squaring that and then distributing the, the pi there. Integral from 0 to 4 dx. So we get 4 pi x, 4 pi is just a constant after all, pi x squared over 2, okay, so that would be, uh, the 0 is going to be 0, so that is just going to be 16 pi minus 8 pi, 8 pi units cubed. Okay. One last problem, and we're going to look at this one. It's one of these, think about it differently. Okay. We're going to use the disk method, but this time we have a function in terms of y. g of y equals the square root of 4 minus y. And here we're between there and the y-axis, between 0 to 4, and we're going around the y-axis. Okay. If you look at the last question, Everything that changed, we have, instead of g f of x, we have g of y, 4 minus x, 4 minus y, x-axis, y-axis, x-axis, y-axis. Okay, so really, I'm going to go ahead and graph this one. But 4 minus y looks like, square root of 4 minus y looks like a quadratic. All right, 
from here and the y-axis over the interval from 0 to 4, and 4 is the y-intercept. So we are determining this region right here, revolve. So you end up with a volume something like this. Now, I didn't draw a picture for the last one, but if you did, you might notice it looks very similar. Okay, so these are going to be disks still, so we can apply the disk method. V equals the integral from 0 to 4, pi, square root of 4 minus y, squared dy. Same idea, we square it, we distribute our pi, actually I'm not going to distribute the pi here. Um, we'll leave the, in fact I'll factor the pi out. Just so we can see integrating that just a little different. Factor the pi out, and that would be 4 minus y, which would be 4x minus, pardon me, 4y minus y squared over 2 from 0 to 4, and then we bring down our factor of pi. And this will be, surprise, surprise, 8 pi units cubed. Okay, now this one looked something like this. Square root of 4 minus y from 0 to 4 revolve. So we have this region and we're revolving at about Those two ought to look very similar. If you rotate the picture 90 degrees, you've actually got the same picture because those functions were just a simple change for x and y, x-axis for y-axis. We actually end up with the same functions. Okay, they are, they represent, it's, they're different functions, but they are rotated around. The function itself is just rotated 90 degrees. So, yeah. So, what if our cross-section is not a circle? What if our cross-section is not a circle? but it's an annulus. Okay, an annulus is a disc with a cutout. So a, a donut, if you'd like. Okay, so an annulus. Then we have to use something called the washer method. This actually is a blast to the last section between these two functions. That's what you're doing. You're finding the area or the volume between the two functions. So suppose f of x and g of x are continuous non-negative functions where f of x is greater than or equal to g of x over the interval a to b, closed interval. Let r be the region bounded by f of x and g of x on that interval. Then the volume of the solid of revolution formed by revolving r about the x-axis is given by v equals integral from a to b of pi. This is the outside here, so the outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. So let's go ahead and graph this next one and see how this follows through. So f of x equals x and 1 over x. Okay, now it's bounded between these two functions and it's over the interval 1 to 4. Now 1 is actually where they intersect. So we have got this region right here revolved around the x-axis. So that would be and down here at the end it's actually one-fourth. So it's cut off just a little bit. Okay. The region down there from one to four. So what you don't really see here, hold on, something isn't right. I have skipped over that right there. I just I just shaded in the wrong area. Okay, so it is from 1 to 4, but it's the region right here. Okay, so it's bounded above by f of x. Ah, so it's this region right here. Okay, that makes more sense. So when I revolve this around, I'm actually going to get something that looks like this. And if you notice, there's really a cutout here. 
and there is a section missing and it's this right here so we're going to find the area of the entire the larger function squared minus the inside function that way we're kind of taking out the volume that's in the inside so our volume is going to be integral from 1 to 4 and the outer function is f of x the outer function is f of x so we will have pi I'm going to go ahead and factor that pi out f of x minus g of x but we're going to square both of those So, if I integrate those piece by piece, this is going to be x cubed over 3. And that is 1 over x squared. So that is plus 1 over x. From the 1 to 4. Okay, evaluating that, we get 81 over 4 pi. units cubed. So again, the outside radius minus the inside radius because we're pulling the inside out of that. So if you could imagine if you were working in a factory and they were you were actually supposed to find know how much a uh, liquid or whatever is going inside a container that's actually shaped like a donut, say a you know a tire or something like that, you could use something like this. Um, to know how the volume, how much air actually fits in or how much of the liquid actually fits in in a certain way. Okay, so there are some good uses for some of these which we'll get into in the next couple sections. Find the volume of a solid revolution by revolving the region bounded above by the f of x equals square root of x, below by the graph g of x equals 1 over x, over the interval 1 to 3, and you're revolving around the x-axis. Now, I even just messed it up, and I've done the problem a couple times on that last one. So read these carefully. It's bounded above by this function and below by this function. So square root of x is bounded above. That is our upper function. And it's bounded below by 1 over x from 1 to 3. So we're actually looking at potentially the, a region here. Now, 1, I believe, is a place where they intersect. And 3, right there. Now, we are going to integrate this, or revolve it first. First is going to be right here. Second is going to be right here. And we have got an inside function right there and an outside function right there. This actually looks kind of like a bunt pan, if that's, you can kind of see that looking at it from the side. So our volume is going to be the integral from 1 to 3. I'm going to go ahead and factor my pi out. My outside function is the square root of x squared minus my inside function, 1 over x squared. So this will be the integral from 1 to 3, bring that pi down of x minus 1 over x squared. That will be x squared over 2 plus 1 over x. Uh -huh. Okay, evaluated from 1 to 3, and we do of course have pi there because of our because we have disks here. Okay. Plugging in 3, we get 29 over 6. And then plugging in 1, we get 1 half plus 1, so that's 3 over 2. Okay, and I have the pi there. So this will be 10 over 3 pi units cubed. All right, last example, most complicated one we've had so far. Find the volume of a solid revolution formed by revolving the region bounded above by f of x equals 4 minus x and below by the x-axis from 0 to 4 
and we're revolving it around the function g of x equals negative 2. All right, so let's graph this to begin with. So 4 minus x is going to be at 4 there and at 4 there. All right, now we're actually going from there to the x-axis over the interval 0 to 4, but we're revolving around the function. Here's our axis. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sketch that. So I'm actually going to, my function is going to do something like this. All right, now my inside function, hmm, so the x-axis is actually going to produce a and right here. So we're going to have a an inside cylinder there. Okay, now because it isn't the x-axis, we're going to shift everything up. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift all of these up so that we get, so that we're revolving around the x-axis. We get a boundary of g of x equals 2. Instead of instead, so the x-axis boundary becomes g of x equals two as a boundary. My four minus x becomes a six minus x. However, that looks still from zero to four, but I'm now revolving this way. So I've got I am going to have an inside inside circle there, inside circle there, inside, that's not quite a circle, but it's going to look something like that. So this question actually is going to become f of x equals 6 minus x below by g of x equals 2 over the interval from 0 to 4 about the x-axis. So that was our, our y equals 0 was the original boundary and so now where it's the boundary is now g of x equals 2 because we've shifted it all up. All right, so from g of x equals negative 2 to 0, that's how we kind of fix this. So we've already drawn the graph there. The inside function is 2. The outside function is 6 minus x. So our volume is going to be from 0 to 4, pi, and f of x, the outside, is 6 minus x minus the inside, which is 2, all right, so this will be pi, integral from 0 to 4, of 32 minus 12x plus x squared. That also takes into account the minus 4 that we have there. All right, so 32x, bring down our pi, minus 6x squared plus x cubed over 3 dx. Oh, no dx. We've taken the antiderivative from 0 to 4. Plugging in 0 works nicely, so we'll just plug 4 in. Plugging in 4, we get 160 over 3. Can't forget our pi. 160 thirds pi units cubed. All right, now I'll say this again, that the point of this is that you can rewind, you can listen again, you can pause this as you go through. So please go back and look at these again and make sure these make sense to you because when we, when we actually meet, we want to be able to talk about them in a better sense than just you just seeing it for the first time. All right, so go ahead and Go back if you need to look at this, because this is a little bit tricky. It's a little bit different from what we've done before. So, I'll leave you with section 2.2.